Hello everyone, we're at Mars Effects. Previous two vlogs we unboxed two great monitors, each with their own unique capabilities. Now let's test them out in real life. Let's see how they perform. Alright, okay. With our new color station and with our amazing monitor, Today we're gonna be checking out what it's capable of and we're gonna give you a tour of what kind of system that we have. Amazing monitors. Amazing monitors, yeah. yeah. Well, actually, like, this leaves this one in the shadow, but this one is amazing for our timeline. Yes. We will open our DaVinci Resolve and start with this, basically. Okay, so we are very happy to have our color grading workstation up and running at full speed dual monitor setup. One of them is the Dell Ultrawide uh, we did an unboxing of on episode 2 and the other one, the other monitor is the color accurate HDR Flanders Scientific. We have the DaVinci micro panel. Today we'll go through our setup and see what it is capable of. DaVinci Resolve is running currently. One thing I forgot to mention is that we have a 10G connection to this computer from our server, so we'll be able to run any kind of raw file in a very fast way. Yes. For, uh, suitable for editing directly from the server. Exactly. Right? Exactly. And grading as well. Exactly. Light speed, baby. Okay. All right. Let's import a couple of different scenes so we can see how this monitor behaves. One thing that I should do before I do anything. DaVinci Resolve by default is Rec. 709 2.4 Gamma and I can set our Flanders monitor to the same color space so that everything behaves in the correct form. So I'm changing the settings of the Flanders monitor from HDR mode to Rec. 709. Right now we are using P3 ST 2084 which is the HDR standard. I'll set this to BT709, also let's set our ETOF to 2.4 Gamma to match our timeline. Human eye sees uh, color in a very different way than how the computer interprets it. Yes. And this human eye sees it with a gamma curve. Mm -hmm. So we have our eyes are very much uh, prone to detecting contrast in not so bright or not so dark conditions. So with the gamma curve, uh, you can record more information in those mid-tones, like the human skin, in general, your normal daily viewing conditions. So uh, we're just expanding the bandwidth of uh, important stuff like skin tones. Exactly, and, and, and lowering the bandwidth of dark areas and uh, highlights. Okay. So the footage is shot in a log format. Yes. And the log format is very much different than Gamma 2.4. Generally, the log format has a Gamma of like 5.6 or like... 4.5 or it's a very huge gamma uh, when we convert it to uh, 2.4 gamma it becomes generally the footage that you see on youtube or somewhere else that's what right. uh, we are used to that's like a standard for monitors srgb is 2.1 gamma for example so yeah we changed our flanders scientific color space as well so it's matching whatever we are viewing we are seeing log footage from Ari Alexa right now. One thing that I can do in my timeline is that because I know that uh, our camera is at Ali, Ari Alexa, I can just go here and be like, okay, we shot this with um, Ari Log C. And our timeline is uh, Rec. 709 2.4 and our output space is gonna be the same. And save it. Now we see the true colors because it's interpreting the Alexa footage as uh, Rec. 709 footage. So it looks quite fine. If we compare those two by eye, uh, you can see that Flanders is not uh, overexposing anything or it's able to maintain saturation information in the highlights, whereas the more brighter this image gets, uh, the uh, less saturated it gets. Now. Yes. What we are running on our computer is a 10G connection card, so we can literally scrub through our timeline in Alexa raw footage very easily without any hiccups. And the machine that we are running is a 16-core Ryzen 3950X 
slightly overclocked too, I think. We have a RTX 2080 Super graphics card in there, 64 gigs of RAM running at 3200 3, megahertz and some NVMe SSD storage for running the operating system and the programs that are installed. Anything other than that are running directly from our server. So, it's a very, very capable machine. Uh, the processor may not be as capable as the one we tested in the first video of the vlog, which is the Threadripper video. Yeah. The link in the description below, you can check this out as well. If you haven't seen our previous vlog posts, you should watch them. So, and while you're at it, <laughs> you can go and subscribe and if you want the bell. To, yeah, the bell, like the, yeah, exactly. All right, that's it. Now we're ready to grade our footage. This is not a tutorial video. We're just giving you the general tour and what um, our setup is capable of. Let's, for this, for example, let's go into our color section. We are already converting to 709. We see some clipping, for example, and by using our panel, we can directly start grading the footage. We can lower the gamma slightly down, get those highlights increase back the gamma so let's explain to our viewers what does that dashed line on 512 mean and what's hdr here on the scope and what's not hdr so right now in we are not running on the hdr mode uh, and that 512 line exactly meet, meets our midtones our yes. middle grays yes and that means that when we are grading our footage, we generally want to keep our skin tones in that 512 and uh, 384 range. So we have a nice gradient and it's easy to look at. Let's get some highlights down because outside the window is clipping. Thankfully, um, the Alexa is a very capable camera, which is able to shoot a huge dynamic range. I think it's 17 stops or something like that, which is- Possibly, yes. 17 stops of exposure that's really really much and if actually the cinematographer or whoever's handling the camera on the set the dop th yeah does the dop does their job correctly the white balance and everything is going to be set correctly and we won't have to do any kind of uh, correction on that either so right now it seems to me that our white balance is quite uh, accurate if i get this uh, as a gray point for example mm -hmm. rgb values are looking great and one other thing that i can do is i can just instead of my parades i can go to my vector scope here to see our skin tone line and while our uh, magic tool here is unable to which is showing our layers uh, i can just choose uh, yes yes it's so a huge screen so i'm not used to this exactly yeah. um, our Actually, image is slightly more magenta that, than what we would like, so tiny bit correction. That's the difference. Oops. Um, Small differences. That's the difference. You can't even see it, but if you look at our vector scope, all those skin tones are following the line now, mm -hmm. which is quite fitting. So if I enable my uh, masking again and zoom in slightly, uh, you see the chosen colors, which are the skin tones, are following that line exactly. Uh, if it was wrong, uh, it would, for example, be shifted slightly like yes. this, and the skin tones would look gray, which is not right. something that we want. And after um, actually adjusting my skin tones, I disabled my selection so that the whole image gets the same gradient. So. Uh, relative to the skin tones, the image is uh, quite on point at the moment. Can we see a before and after, which is not going to be color accurately represented on mo your monitor, guys? Uh, so if I, yeah, if I show you like this, you can see after, before, after, before. Uh, the image had some greens missing from it. Yes. Now uh, it's actually... Subtle adjustments go a long way. Exactly. So. What we're doing here in DaVinci and this expensive setup, the whole point of having an expensive and very correct setup is uh, that accuracy. Well, this just has been a very small demo of what this system is capable of. We have everything from a very capable machine to a very capable monitor. 
What do you think, George? Well, this was really impressive. Uh, so you guys are welcome to come work on your projects here in this setup, and hopefully we'll see you. Also, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, and drop a comment in the section below. Don't hesitate to let us know what kind of future videos you'd like to see from ImmerseFX, and just drop a comment down below for us to know what you would like to see from our studio. Have a nice one. Have a nice one, guys.